Rioters in the city of Durham, North Carolina, destroyed a statue honoring Confederate war dead. They pulled it down yesterday while cops stood by and did nothing. Well, you'd think the government allowing policy decisions to be made by mob violence would be a big concern among liberals. It's not a good precedent to set, but they don't seem bothered at all. Instead, a top priority on the left right now is securing a rollback of free speech rights for you and me. Yesterday on MSNBC, Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Cullors said the First Amendment's protections don't apply to whatever is deemed to be hate speech. We're seeing a movement of um, white nationalists rising up because they've been emboldened by uh, Trump and his government. A hate speech, which is uh, what we're seeing coming out of white nationalist groups, uh, is not protected on the First Amendment rights. Jasmine Kanick is a political commentator and she joins us tonight. Jasmine, thanks for coming on. So, um, thanks for having me. Hate speech. Hate speech is not protected by the First Amendment. You hear this a lot. Of course, hate speech is not mentioned in the Bill of Rights. There are a bunch of Supreme Court decisions, Brandenburg versus Ohio being, uh, I think, the most important, that, that explain it very explicitly, yes, language you disagree with is covered by the First Amendment. But tell me where this idea comes from, because everybody seems to be repeating it. Well, first of all, you know, Patrice Cullors is a, is a good friend of mine, and I definitely understand what mm -hmm. she's saying. You know, legally, is hate speech protected? Absolutely. Should it be? That depends on where you fall on the issue. When you're talking about white nationalism and white supremacists, yes, there is a lot of hate speech from that side. And she's absolutely right. When we talk about um, issues around black lives and issues around equality, um, you know, there isn't the hate that is coming from the other side. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, you know, so. Well, I guess that I, all I kind mean, of I depends on what you think is hateful. <laughs> I mean, this is, look, let me just say you really know, clearly. When you, I'm um, against people hurting really each other's when you feelings. Have the I'm KKK, for uh -huh. No, when you have the KKK and white folks talking about death to black people, death to African Americans, you know, um, calling well, people the N-word. I agree completely. Uh, that's hateful. No, it's not awful. That's hateful. That's a perfect example of hate okay. speech. It's, it's, now, it's, it's absolutely hateful. you want to talk about liberals hateful. and you want to no, talk but, but, about... But hold on, wait. So, so no, that, may I ask you a question? I mean, this is a pointless... Con this is actually kind of the point I was making. Is you're, And I agree with everything you said. That is hateful and it's awful. I'm offended by it. It is. But really what you're saying Good. is you're offended. And that's the problem with hate speech, this fake category that we've made up all of a sudden, because it's entirely subjective. What's offensive to you or hateful f to you may not be as offensive to me. We're both American citizens. We both live under the same Bill of Rights. I agree. You see the problem. So attempts by the left to ban speech are as bad as attempts by the right to ban speech. So why don't we just call a truce and stop trying to prevent people <laughs> we disagree with from speaking? No, I definitely agree with you on that point. It is, a, it is a slippery slope when you start to try to define what is hateful and what is not. But it is really clear, right. especially given the, um, the images and, and the video that we saw coming out of Charlottesville, there was a lot of hate speech. You know, there was a lot of hatefulness. And I think that a lot of Americans are really tired of it. I, I don't think it's just well, liberal I Democrats. I think Americans, period, are very tired of the rhetoric on both sides. And when you talk about Charlottesville, for example, what I thought was really interesting was you had a lot of politicians coming out condemning it and calling for unity. And I remember saying to myself, you need to lead by example. There's a lot of hateful rhetoric coming out of Washington, D.C. that Americans are watching every single day. And then you have instances like Charlottesville and what's going on around the country. People are angry. People are upset. No, I, um, I, so I, I agree. We, I agree. It's love, but, it's, but hold on. We can't have that conversation or any conversation until we both agree that we have the right to say what we believe and that we're not going to be punished for doing that. And I see a lot of attempts on the left to shut down the conversation because they don't like what the other side is saying. And that is not the road to reconciliation or harmony. Versa. That's the road to division and war. Uh, look, and, I don't think there are attempts versa, by the right to shut on the no, right to yes to shut down people's <laughs> yes. speech. Name one. Even on this very network. Come on now. <laughs> Name one. I can't. 
Are you kidding? Everyone with any point no, of view I'm is allowed not. on my show. In fact, <laughs> welcome to my show. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Since we're, we're talking about the events the last couple of days, so uh, left-wing protesters are upset by the existence of Civil War memorials. Robert E. Lee statues, because they're symbols yeah. of racial discrimination and hate. If you knew that there were 50 public buildings paid for by taxpayers, maintained by taxpayers in this country, named after a Ku Klux Klan recruiter, would that bother you? Look, there are buildings in Los Angeles. There, were, there was a building in Los Angeles named after one of the most racist police chiefs of the Los Angeles Police Department. No, the, and, there's no uh, comparison. Hold on, hold on. Hold this on, is not a racist police chief. This is the exalted cyclops of the KKK, Robert Byrd, <laughs> the longest serving U.S. senator who just died several years ago. Why is there no effort to take his name off these buildings? As a former Klan recruiter, you'd think people would be offended by his name. I think you need to give it time. But I think one of the issues is that you can take down all of the okay. monuments, you can, and you can change the names of a lot of buildings, but you can't change American history. And I think that's part of what's missing from this conversation. Do I want to see monuments and statues of, of, of people who are racist or supported slavery? Not really, but at the same time, I don't completely want to erase American history either because I want to make sure future generations know what happened. And I think we're in this cycle right now we're in we're in such a rush to get rid of things that remind that remind us of bad times in our history and it's like yeah it, it was bad but you know what we also have to remember what happened and pass that down in hopes of not repeating it as well well i i think that's right and also the united states ended slavery around the world and maybe we should get some credit for that too don't you think uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're out of time. Yeah. Think about that, Jasmine. Thanks we, for coming on tonight. I can't even get Americans to talk about reparations, so no. Thank you. Uh.